All right, let's get started. So, yeah, before we begin, this is my first talk at WizJS, and I was like, you know, I really got to step it up. Got to be a pro this time. And so I was at Aldi the other day, and saw this funny little presenter here, and I thought, you know, <laughs> this is really how I need to step it up. You know, I was at Yarcon, and I saw everyone with one of these, and you know, so I decided to bring one on along, along with me because. I just want to be a pro, but <laughs> as it turns out, I don't really feel much like a pro. I feel more like I should be pointing at graphs and talking about the contents within. So before we start, I just want you all to bear with me. I need to get this out of my system. I just need to talk about a graph. <laughs> so as you can see here, we have a programming skill over blood alcohol concentration and you can see about roughly up here between the 12 and the 14, we're seeing a massive spike. This is good. Uh, and following that spike, we're seeing a massive hill. Uh, massive trough. <laughs> and so this feels like it's the kind of time when your program is going to be running around the office just screaming about how the lizard people are putting bugs in their code. I think I've got it out of my system now, so let's get started. Hello, I am Brandon Backer, wannabe hacker, JavaScript ninja, and BIM journeyman. I work at a lovely place called Rex Software. If you ever wanted to do React development, a really cutting edge environment, hit us up because we're always looking for stuff. And you can see a lovely picture of myself there. It was when I just hatched out of a cocoon, fully grown, and Am I not the happiest little chap with my possibly bright teeth, my creepy bug eyes? So, anyway, a few months ago, I saw this uh, OzCon talk by a fellow called Damien Conway. He does a really good Vim talk, and he said something that really blew my mind. I've just never even remotely considered this. So, I just wanted to share this with you before we start. Oh. Give me a second here, I can't make it. Alright, so sorry, technical issues, give me a second. This is probably not going to work, so we'll just skip on. But basically, he talks about how he doesn't like syntax colouring, and he seems quite in, quite indignant about this. He just really doesn't like syntax colouring, and so this really surprised me. It blew my mind. I mean, I've just never heard of this before. I mean, I imagine the majority of programmers here, we've started out in an era where syntax colouring is very common. So. I looked this up because I wanted to see, you know, is this actually a thing? And it turns out Damien is not the only one. So we have Linus Torvalds who needs no introduction, uh, as we just talked about, Damien Conway, Andrew Guerin from the Go community, and of course everyone's favourite JavaScript grandpa, uh, Douglas Crockford. So these are really smart people and they don't use syntax colouring. Like, what's with that? So, I put a bit of a test myself, I wanted to go without it for a month, or roughly a month, and see what I learned. And so I went into my editor, and I turned my Syntax off. Um, so I recall my first response was something like, mm. um, it, it's really strange. It, it's like losing a sense. You're missing something. Uh, this was a bit of a shock to me. 
As it turns out, this isn't really the best way to go about it. Uh, a lot of people who have come down the same path has basically put together color schemes for people who don't like color schemes. So I'm going to show you what one of them looks like. Much the same as you saw before, the biggest difference being strings are highlighted. Syntax, oh, sorry, uh, the strings are highlighted with a bit of a black background there and the comments are dark. That's really the only difference from standard, uh, standard syntax off. And so that's what I went with. And so I came up with four questions, four questions that I wanted to answer by the end of this trial because I really wanted to see just how it affected the way I program and the way I affected how I, how I interpreted the code that I was reading. And so these four questions were, how does syntax, does syntax colouring make it harder or easier to understand the code? Does syntax colouring increase or decrease cognitive load? Does syntax colouring aid readability and does syntax coloring change your mental parsing of the code? And so my first question which was the, the syntax coloring make it harder or easy to understand code. So this is one of the things that I noticed as I started getting into it. Uh, this code is quite small and it's small for a reason in that we don't really want to read the code, it's just more how it presents itself to you at a glance. And so I started to find that as I was working through it, it became a lot harder to figure out where all these sort of multi-line statements and all this kind of stuff started and ended. It, it just, at a glance, it started blending in on each other. After a while, I got used to all of this. I think it's just a matter of the way your mind adapts, but it's something that I found really fascinating and very frustrating at the same time. And so one of the other things I found out was the color aids in understanding the function of code. So even at this small size, we can roughly see that all of our let statements have a sort of aqua color, ifs are magenta, and so on, versus this, where everything is exactly the same color. So even if you're not reading it, you have a pretty rough idea of what the structure of the code that you're looking at already is. So my next question was, does syntax colouring increase or decrease the cognitive load? So, if you're not familiar with the idea of cognitive load, it's kind of like a mental overhead. And as programmers, it's something that we really need to work to reduce. So, if you have a code base with a large amount of cognitive overload, it means that you have to keep a lot of things in your mind in order to understand the code that you're looking at right now. And that's going to be different for every code base. But I figured that maybe reducing, uh, removing your colour increased or decreased. I wasn't really sure. I thought it might increase the cognitive overload. And so I put that to the test. Oh, wrong way, sorry. And so one thing I did find is it's very hard to understand the flow and the variables at a glance. So uh, this isn't the best example just because I'm using Vim and the colour schemes work differently. But even just at a glance, you kind of have a rough idea of what's going on here. All of your methods, you can tell by it, it's a method because you've got your this and that's coloured that kind of salmon sort of colour. And so it's the kind of things that you don't consciously think about, but it's in your mind. That's one of the things that I found. And so next question, does syntax colouring aid readability? Yeah, I think this one's pretty obvious, but uh, one thing I did find was that when you start wanting to hone in your code, so when you start flipping between tasks I, and scrolling along, I found it was a lot easier to keep track of where I was at any given time. So I'm just going to show you a pretty extreme example of this one. So it's sort of a matter of being able to keep your eye on where it's going, so you're flipping between your 
your Chrome editor, and your Chrome browser, and that kind of stuff. So I was finding it that I'd come back and I'd kind of be like shocked for a moment in that I just needed to reevaluate where I was and switching back the color, I found it a lot easier to uh, come back to where I was. So one of the things about how our brain works is that we operate on color and movement on a different level than we operate things like reading. And so when you've got these color patterns, they kind of act more like this sort of primitive, on this primitive level. And so you don't really see the text as it is, but blocks of color. And so when you knew you were looking at a block of color, when you come back to that, when you're scrolling, you find it a lot easier to track that. And so the next question was, does syntax coloring change your mental parsing? So how you actually understand the code, how you read through the code and build up your mental model of what this code base actually looks like. And so we have something that's more like a, a quick and a slow mental parsing in that your quick mental parsing is something you build up over time as you start getting more used to looking at code and understanding the code. It's, it's a quick way that you can quickly look through a bit of code and understand what it actually does without properly going through and reading it and running each line of code in your mind. And so I found that by not having that subliminal information, I found it a lot harder to use that quick mental parsing. I was having to stop and read through each line of code a lot more often. Uh, that was actually quite frustrating to me, but it was actually quite fascinating. And so, yeah, I had this kind of grand illusion that I'd come into a programming competition or something and they'll be like, yeah, this is Brandon Backer, professional hacker, and JavaScript Ninja, and all this kind of stuff, and he doesn't use syntax highlighting, and everyone would just be amazed. Um, and all these people would go from the corner grumbling, and I'd be like, go on, haters. <laughs> no, as it turns out, the haters did win. Uh, this isn't all as it turned out. Uh, it's quite unfortunate, but I did find out that turning off your color is actually really good for something. And it's something that I talked about before with your quick mental parsing steps. And so by jamming your quick mental parsing, you have to read through the code bit by bit. That sounds slow, but when you're trying to actually read and understand code, that becomes a lot more useful because it kind of forces you to do it rather than what you want to do is just to quickly read through all this code. And so your quick mental parsing you tend to make mistakes. I'm sure everyone here has had some of these cases where we've sort of we've sort of looked at our code and we've started to build something off it and we come up with some really weird or obscure bug and we think it's all weird and obscure but really we're just using a function wrong or we've we've chosen the wrong variable to work with. So it's that kind of stuff that when you don't pay enough attention to your code it really comes back to bite you. So what I did find was that when I switched off the color, reading new code started to become a lot easier for me to actually conceptualize where it was in a structure. So uh, this is something that is, uh, it's gonna be very specific to your own brain. This is a sample size of one, so to speak. It's very not scientific, but that's sort of what I found when I was looking at it. So. So you were saying? Oh, don't worry. No, thank you. I'll, I'll go <laughs> yeah, cool. Okay, so, well, at the end of the day, I spent probably over a month trying this out and seeing what actually happened, but where has actually that left me in the end? What am I doing now as a programmer? So, something called minimal syntax highlighting. The idea is it's uh, somewhere between. It's a lot more minimal than you'll normally expect, but uh, it's not quite to the level where you don't have any of this color information. I think it is the best of both worlds. I don't know yet. I'm still working on that. 
Uh, at some point, I hope to have some sort of idea on that exactly, but there is a lot of them. Um, I'm just going to show you two of my favourites, the two that I particularly work with. Whoa, is it time for us to leave? <laughs> So this is called Xcode Loki, and by the term Xcode, it actually shipped with Xcode. Apple shipped two minimalist syntax highlighting options with Xcode. Uh, yeah, Apple was the last company that I thought would be catering to my weird interests, but here we are, and so important to Vim. Uh, I've been using this for about two months now. I'm really liking it. It's pretty subtle. You can see, you can see there's just a little bit of blue there. It's that's pretty much it. It just gives you that little bit of context information, I find. Uh, I also had one other one that I like when I'm coding in the dark. And yeah, I get real fired up when I see this one. I just want to you know, go hack a bunch of Gibsons, you know, just jump into your to your terminal and you're like, yeah. <laughs> oh. <laughs> All right, um, I just ruined my demo, I'm so sorry. <laughs> All right, here we go. <laughs> All right, so. Thank you everyone, this is all I have, so I guess we could go to some questions. Did you just try a set language equal to JavaScript? <laughs> Actually, I'm using a pretty good JavaScript color scheme. Um, it's a JavaScript.jsx, but it's a patched version. I found it to be actually pretty decent. Yeah, I mean, I, I just want the, the keywords of the language highlights. Yeah, and yeah, exactly. Brackets. Um, your indentation's nice. And I mean, I find that's mm. the most important thing. Yeah, exactly. It's like, I don't know, I used to use all the big, massive editors, all this kind of stuff, and I just found myself in love with the simplicity of them. It, it just feels good to use, and it's really optimised for my kind of workflow. I was able to, you know, make it fit how I think, and that's one of the big things that I need to do when I'm programming, is to make things work as I know that my brain works, or as I've learned over time. That's kind of why I did this whole trial just to see if it did work with my brain. Yep. Uh, yep. A uh, comment on a question. Yep. Uh, you know, you, the bit that you liked was reading with no... Um, yeah, that's right. What if you could tear yourself away from them for, for, uh, for reading and use a different editor than use them for your writing? Yeah, well, there's nothing to say I couldn't just uh, switch colour schemes. I mean, you saw how quickly I switched between a few colour schemes just then. So you can't tell yourself. Oh no, I mean, I just enjoy it. Once you get, yeah, once you get used to all the different commands, all that kind of stuff, it makes it a lot easier to just jump through code. Yeah. I mean, if you, know, if you know Vim, you know regular expressions, you can write the stuff that it works. Yeah, exactly. I, my re regex isn't amazing, but I know I've learned a lot more about regex since I started using Vim than prior. Uh, anyone else? No? All right, thank you. Cool.